I was a huge fan of the CX-5 when it first came out. Still kind of a fan of it now. I'm just, I'm a little shocked they haven't redesigned it yet. It's been almost, what, like seven years? The CX-50, however, I think I'm equally as excited for. Not as excited as the CX-5, I don't think, but what could have put me over the edge had the lease numbers looked like the CX-5's lease numbers when the CX-5 first came out, I think I would have been just over the moon, just crazy about the CX-50. I like the design of the CX-50. I like that it's like perfectly square, kind of low, but not really too, too low. Has the perfect amount of gloss black trim. Kind of a big fan of the fact that for 35K, you can get the preferred plus package. Gives you leatherette, gives you moonroof, gives you LED lights. Not a huge fan of the 187 horsepower and 186 pound-feet of torque, though. What I want to do for you in this video is break down exactly what you can expect if you're in the market to buy or lease a Mazda CX-50. I'll break down some inventory. We'll talk about the lease numbers, and by the end, you'll know whether or not you'll want to buy it or lease it. What is happening, guys? Ari here from NegotiationGuides.com. By clicking here, you'll be able to access pricing from local dealerships in your area. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because this whole channel is going to give you everything you're going to need to know so that you can negotiate your best possible deal. You guys, let's get down to business. Right now, there's about 14,000 Mazda CX-5s. The reason why I'm mentioning this is that if you try and compare inventory levels, it's not even close. Roughly about 3,500 Mazda CX-50s according to cars.com data. We've got roughly 1,200 preferred plus. I'm gonna stick to the preferred plus for the sake of tonight's negotiation guide, but just to give you an idea, relative to the preferred plus, a lot less in premium plus packages. We got 579 for the premium plus and the Turbo Meridian about 580 or so as well. Other trims, you're gonna find a little bit of difficulty getting them in stock or for a decent deal at MSRP, which is what I wanna to suggest to you to pay on the CX-50. Now, according to Mazda, right now, there's a 2.9% APR offer at 36 months or 4.9 at 60. I guess if you're planning on financing at 60 and you didn't feel like shopping around at a, at a local bank or credit union, I guess you can kind of skip that step, go to the dealership and just hope you qualify at tier one. Right now, Mazda has a variable money factor across the different trims, but on the preferred plus, there's a 0.00211 money factor in my region, a 59% residual at 36 months. If the money factor or the interest rate was a lot lower, it would actually make for a pretty decent lease given a 59% residual. Now on the website for roughly around a $35,000 Mazda CX-50, they quoted me about $528. That payment doesn't include tax. The payment assumes that you're gonna be doing 10,000 miles a year, and the payment also assumes that you're paying your inception fees, like your dealer fees, first payment, registration, all that stuff, do it, start. From just looking at it quickly, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's also not fantastic. It's kind of like a ugh. But for those of you that were considering purchasing, it's actually not a bad thing to have a car only depreciate. 41% over the course of three years. It did seem like residuals did adjust quite a bit though in the last few months. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, if it's a good idea to just go out and get the CX-5 or the CX-50, if you're trying to save a few bucks and you don't really care about the fact that the CX-5 is at this point a seven-year-old body design, I'd probably tell you go for the CX-5. But given the fact that the Mazda CX-50 just came out and there's probably probably no used CX-50s out there. Your best bet is definitely not to lease the CX-50. I would probably buy it. I would probably finance it at 36 months if you can afford the payment. That way you pay little, as little as possible in interest. And if you can chip away at the loan a little bit faster, get it paid off as much as you can without paying too, too much in interest. And what I wanna suggest is, is just based on the fact that a lot of dealerships are offering the vehicle at MSRP, when you click highest price as one of the filters, it seems as though there will be a ton of dealerships willing to cut this deal at MSRP or who knows, even below it. Do your best, use the link right up here to shop around local dealerships for best prices. And if you found this information useful, please consider subscribing. Thank you so, so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time.